Hey, Cody Roll, Tech for Psych. This week, I wanted to be holding a cat in this segment. I'm at my friend's house, and he has a cat. Unfortunately, I'm allergic to cats, and I do not know how to handle them. Hey, buddy. Want to film a video with me? Archie. Oh, don't go under the bed. Anyways, this segment has to do with cats a little bit, and for the rest of the talk, I want to take it to the park and talk about some interesting things. Hey, Cody Raw here with Tech for Psych. I've got some fungus here down on the branch. Um, it's part of the talk. The cat's sort of part of the talk, too. Um, it's going to be a little bit of weird things that I'm talking about because it has to do with mind control, believe it or not. Um, if you remember back to 2006 when Planet Earth came out with their nature series, they had a certain fungus on there called cordyceps. And cordyceps actually infects ants and other insects. Um, each species of cordyceps actually specializes in a particular insect. And as I said on the nature series, it showed a particular type of cordyceps that infected ants. And when the fungus got inside the ant's body, it actually went into the central nervous system and manipulated the ant's behavior. It caused them to crawl up plants to the top and latch on with their mandibles at the very top and die. And the fruiting body of the cordyceps would grow at the top of its head. How weird is that? Um, that was so that the cordyceps fungus fruiting body could be at the top and have high elevation and also the right temperature for the fruiting body to grow out and spread its spores throughout the forest so that it would have better ability to reproduce. Now that type of manipulative behavior uh, is, is found in parasites throughout the animal kingdom and if you think it's limited to fungus and insects, let me blow your mind here a little bit. So if you think that manipulative behavior is limited to fungus infecting ants, um, let me talk about another species that does something similar. There's actually a protozoan called toxoplasmosis that can only sexually reproduce in the intestines of cats. Now if you think about it, it gets inside the cat digestive system, the cat goes to the bathroom, and then the toxoplasmosis ends up in the soil. Now toxoplasmosis infects a lot of other vertebrates, but the one that we're most interested in is rodents, and rats in particular. Now, when toxoplasmosis gets into rats, it has to find a way to get back into a cat so that it can reproduce sexually within the, task, within the cat's intestines. Now, scientists have been looking at the toxoplasmosis infection of rats for a number of years and have found some really, really interesting things. First of all, toxoplasmosis has a mammalian gene inside of it that actually codes for producing dopamine. It's called tyrosine hydroxylase. And dopamine is very psychoactive. It causes organisms to do all kinds of things. So when the toxoplasmosis gets inside of rats, it gets into its central nervous system and forms cysts. Within these cysts, the tyrosine hydroxylase is creating this excess dopamine, manipulating the behavior of the rats. The first thing that it does is somehow gets into the fear circuits of the rodents. Within the amygdala in the fear circuitry, it actually disconnects a lot of the neuro neuronal connections, causing the rats to have a diminished fear response. Another thing that it does is in the circuit responsible for sexual stimulation, it actually causes the rats to be sexually excited by cat urine. Now, if you take some rats with toxoplasmosis and rats without toxoplasmosis, and you have a box, and on one side of the box you have cat urine, and you throw in all the rats, the rats with toxoplasmosis will go to the side of the box with cat urine, while the rats without toxoplasmosis will go to the other side. As you can imagine, manipulating the rat's behavior allows the toxoplasmosis to be much more likely to get back into the cat. Obviously, if a rat has a diminished fear response and becomes sexually excited by the smell of cat urine, it's gonna hang around areas where there's more cats present allowing the toxoplasmosis to get back with inside of the cat. So this manipulative behavior is really interesting and one has to wonder, is this only limited to things like ants and cats? Could this be affecting humans somehow? Now, when you look at epidemiological studies, humans that have schizophrenia are more likely to have toxoplasmosis. Is this because they hang out in areas that are dirty and they get toxoplasmosis, or is the toxoplasmosis itself actually affecting the person's behavior? Scientists have known since the 80s that people that develop schizophrenia are more likely to be born 
in the winter or early spring. Now, this is likely to do to some infectious insult that happens during the fetal period, causing some sort of neurodeve neurodevelopmental uh, pathology, leading to people being more pre predisposed to developing schizophrenia. There's actually an article that just came out in American Journal of Psychiatry this month of September that was a Finnish study and took a look at uh, serum samples from over a million mothers. The Finnish health system actually uh, compiled serum samples from all these mothers when they gave birth back in the 80s. And now that the children have grown up, scientists are actually able to look at ones that develop schizophrenia. And what they found is looking back to their mother's serum samples, they had elevated C-reactive protein, which is an inflammatory marker, by like something like 60%. Now, when one looks at that, you must realize that there's some sort of inflammatory process that was going on during the developmental period. And could this be related to people developing schizophrenia? Who knows, but it could be autoimmune, it could be inf infectious, it could be a number of causes. But when you look at the infectious causes that might lead to something not behaving properly, whether it be a rat infected by toxoplasmosis or people getting affected by influenza or other manipulative parasites like toxoplasmosis, one has to wonder, are there preventable things that we can do for people that develop that type of mental illness? It's still in the research and obviously we're developing, we're developing the genetic studies and also all these other studies that allow us to uh, quantify what actually is causing mental illnesses like schizophrenia, but hopefully with time we'll get better and come up with some novel treatments in order to treat mental illness. This is Cody Rawl with Tech for Psych. I'll see you next time. I really appreciate your guys' comments. Peace. Archie, do you have toxoplasmosis? Do you have toxoplasmosis? Archie.